Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today in Molsheim in France at the home of Bugatti here in front of the Chateau Saint-Jean to experience this, the Bugatti Chiron Supersport. The Supersport derivative, the fastest version that's available and this particular car is the one we're going to be driving today after taking a full look around to go through all of the facts and figures, the details and what makes this such a tremendous machine. The new aerodynamics and this extended tail that it carries as well along with the 1600 horsepower W16 engine. There's a lot to take in, many details I'm sure that you wouldn't know before and today we're going to explore it thoroughly before going out onto the roads with Bugatti's official test driver, Pierre-Henri Raffanel, and then I will get an opportunity to get behind the wheel myself for a first drive in the Bugatti Chiron Supersport. Let's take a full look at this then, here in an incredible location. This is the Chateau Saint-Jean, the historical home of Bugatti. I've explored around a few times. The atelier where the cars are assembled are just down towards the far end. We've got the orangery just here, and then the customer rooms over that side where I visited before as well. But today is all about this particular car, the Chiron Supersport. Now I did have a look previously when I visited at the Chiron Supersport 300 Plus, and I've also been lucky enough to visit and drive in the Chiron Pursport a number of times as well but the super sport is all about top speed effectively matching the capabilities of the record setting run a couple of years ago with Andy Wallace at the wheel when a Chiron super sport 300 plus set a record of 490 kilometers per hour just shy of 305 miles per hour there are only 30 of those but these are now available as well in fact a limited number are still available but all of the different Chiron derivatives come as part of the 500 car run the limited run of total units that will be made including the Chiron, the Chiron Sport, the Chiron Pursport, the Chiron Super Sport 300 Plus and this, the Chiron Super Sport. Then there are quite a few differences to the aerodynamics. For example, the front apron. Of course, aero is very important, particularly with the kind of speeds that this car can reach. It's limited to 440 kilometers per hour. That's 273 miles per hour. But you can see here the extended carbon lower lip, the air curtains around the side. This particular car is this lovely navy blue carbon fiber. You've got these nine holes on each side, which are all to do with reducing air pressure and adding a little bit more downforce at the front to keep it as balanced as possible. Obviously you want to keep this aerodynamically neutral. At those kind of top speeds, there's a lot of lift. The downforce needs to match that. Around towards the rear, you can see how much longer it is, approximately 23 centimeters longer than the original Chiron, still maintaining that single strip tail light that runs across the back and also the active aero of the spoiler back here which itself is 23 millimeters longer than standard which gives it about eight percent more surface area to obviously help act in terms of braking and more downforce where required equally for the diffuser and in particular if we look back here you can see the exhaust tailpipes these are actually 3d printed titanium they serve multiple purposes as well as looking good they also help with the cooling so you get additional air channels around the exterior between the two layers which helps to keep it all cool and not only do you have the four tailpipes that you can see but beneath the diffuser there are actually two further exhausts one on either side of the fins that you have down there as well all to do with airflow and air management and of course that is connected to the engine this famous eight liter quad turbocharged w16 1600 horsepower 1600 newton meters of torque and in fact a slightly different setup new turbochargers and additional new components give it earlier power give it more power 100 horsepower more than the other derivatives but also the gearbox the seventh gear is now 3.6 percent longer which helps achieve that top speed up 20 kilometers per hour from the previous chiron models as well as obviously the different performance statistics Statistics, and this is very fast. Zero to 200 kilometers an hour, which is 124 miles per hour, is dispatched in just 5.8 seconds. Of course, all wheel drive significantly helping with that. But I think one of the biggest numbers is the zero to 400 kilometer per hour time, which is 248 miles per hour. And that takes just 28 0.6 seconds. Now it's hard to put that into perspective, but believe me, it is very, very fast. Now this particular Chiron Super Sport is wearing the magnesium wheels, a wheel set that are 16 kilos lighter in total, four kilos per corner than the standard wheels on the Chiron, which are already pretty light to begin with. We've got the bright orange calipers and the bright orange EV logo to contrast against the navy blue on the exterior. And talking of color schemes, let's have a quick look inside here. 
where you can see we've got the blue leather with the orange stitching against the visible carbon fiber a wonderful place as we've come to expect from the different Bugatti models and a speedometer that goes all the way to 500 kilometers per hour 300 miles per hour depending obviously on the different region but this is where I'm going to be set to drive quite shortly and believe me I cannot wait we've also got the sky view here which is the optional twin roof glass panels to give more of an open feeling inside and just in general look at the aero look at the spine that runs over the top that comes down through the rear spoiler this is a remarkable machine whichever way you look at it but i think it's time probably to get it started in just a moment to head on out and to experience it for myself <laughs> We're on board then, here with Pierre-Henri. Hello. So Pierre-Henri is the man responsible for the Veyron Supersport record run, but we're now here in the Chiron Supersport. Yes, I think it's a big evolution. It's uh, nearly 11 years later, but uh, it's a very significant step. For sure, and we've just had a bit of a run. I've been learning and taking in from you some of the stories about this car, and it's amazing to understand more of the balance, I think, between luxury and performance and where this really sits? Yeah, I think it's uh, the most difficult in a car to achieve is try to, to make this uh, both area of luxury and performance which are normally fighting elements and here in this car you can make it in an harmony where we could drive, I mean, going to the bakery if we want and at the next time you can like use a lot of power, 1600 horsepower and being like super fast in the same car, this is the most difficult to achieve. So maybe we should start with the gentle easy part. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Into drive. So this is the thing, and certainly that I've experienced when I've been lucky to drive in different Bugatti cars before, is that you do just get in and it's not intimidating. You feel that you can just start driving. You can see well, you can pull away smoothly. The gearbox is very gentle and calm. And this is it, right? This is that almost tranquility, the calm before the storm. It's, try, it's trying to surprise a person. I mean, normally you're expecting to be in, in a car which will be like a tremendous difficult, giving you pressure and asking you a lot of things. And we have to make this pressure down because when the, the performance will, will come, you will need your energy. So in this mode, we just need like quietness. Yeah, so we're driving in the EV and I have to point out that we went over that last speed bump without having to use the lifting system which is actually really quite impressive considering there's a lot of aerodynamic work into this car, right? To keep it flat to the ground. But like this, EB mode can gently ease in some of the power. <laughs> Even when you're driving it with just a fraction of what it's capable of, it gives you this amazing sense. It gives you the sense of power and what it is capable of doing. Wow, okay, so. Head around then. Yes, makes to the right. And everything that you touch is such high quality. And this is what you were saying as well about the, the central spine here. Yes, it's a, it's a lot of things which are made for design, of course, but also for other functions about acoustic, about how density the car will give you as a feeling. And it's part of the comfort. If you feel a car which is like in a kind of mass uh, in your hands, you're feeling more noble, more, I mean, more exclusive, more safe. Mm -hmm. And then we have also to, to give that, but also to try to give performance. So, so it's not, as we said before, just trying to put performance in a luxury car. If you only do that, it doesn't work. Here we want to get like a lot of luxury, but also at the same time give something which will be very nimble. As soon as you will turn your steering with four fingers, the car will be re very yeah. reactive. Because it's everything that you touch, you know, it's all proper metals, proper materials. And that, that brings a weight to it, but it brings that quality feel as well. And then when you're driving like this and we're just chilling at the, the normal speed limits of the road, it's calm, it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's easy, it's, it's not stressful to drive. But I know that this is just the, the small sense. Yeah, it's, it's trying to make this like attitude not to add stress, to give you visibility, to give you like space. Uh, to give you comfort, to give you acoustic comfort, and we stay here. Uh, to try to make you relaxing when you don't need to be, uh, to, to be on pressure. Mm -hmm. And then after the car will completely change attitude if you're asking a lot of performance, the car will go in another world, 
but without fighting in a very smooth transition. Everything you're doing is very natural, turning, mm -hmm. power, brakes, it feels like very linear. So everyone will understand that car in this area. Yes. So next we'll have to be a body feeling. Yeah, so you don't you don't necessarily need let's say, huge experience to be able to drive the car and feel comfortable in no, the car? No, because we want the people to be able to drive the car. If I give you an extreme high-performance car uh, to be on the road uh, with uh, 1,600 horsepower and I don't put filters, you will <laughs> basically kill yourself. And uh, what we try to do is to say to the people, enjoy the car and if you want to enjoy it, I mean, we can try. Last time we were doing a test drive where you could put full power without hands on the steering. <laughs> and it's not something that you want to do with 1,600 horsepower, but the car will tell you this message. It's possible. That's incredible. And I mean, we'll, we'll find a, an open road to try a small part of the acceleration of it shortly, but it's this, this kind of two characters. You were saying the reference before to, to the elephant. Yes. The ability of the elephant. And yes. Rembrandt Bugatti, yes. of course. Uh, which was always a link with the Legend edition of the Veyron, I remember yes, it well. very well. And that, in so many ways, I think links to this, right? To the, to the story, the connection. Yes, I, I think you have to, to try to make... Uh, I think a Bugatti is a very refined car, so it's just like, we sending messages, but you have to scratch a little bit. That's, that's the nicest part of the story. When you see this uh, Rembrandt sculpture that we're using in our configuration uh, design, it's a very nice, but it has a meaning. If you see an elephant, an elephant is a powerful animal. This is a very powerful car. Uh, an elephant is a very noble animal. This is a very noble car. Mm -hmm. But our elephant is dancing on the ball. So that <laughs> means he's a child. And a Bugatti must show that. Must be like high performance, a lot of power. But it has to also to be like nimble. And yeah. it's, it's a lot of work around that to make these uh, fighting elements all together. And it's surprising, just going through a few small, slower corners there, it really is almost a finger and a thumb on the steering wheel. And it just glides along, it, it eases along. Yeah. The steering is just to put your hands somewhere, basically. <laughs> in a Bugatti, it's like, uh, it's just no fight. It's like, you have even suspension in the steering wheel. We're putting like suspension in the airbag to avoid you to get vibrations. Wow. Even okay. nobody never complained about vibrations. So it's not trying to fulfill what you will need as a driving or as a driver in a car. It's trying to go above what you will think it's possible. We try to match that and to make it a step higher. Definitely. So at the moment we're driving in the EB, regular ED yes, mode. Yes, most comfortable car, steering is light, the car is a little bit higher. You can change the mode, you can go like in Autobahn, what they call Autobahn mode, which is like changing the attitude of the car. Mm -hmm. Normally this uh, position will go automatically when you go over 180 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Car will change attitude, here you decided to force it to go in this mode. Steering is more precise, suspension is a little bit stiffer, uh, the wing is out ready for action and this position is helping you basically to get a car which will go from 0 to 380 with the same feeling attitude. With many cars you're driving, when you go faster, the front is going lighter, the car is searching the road and then you are starting to be in panic. Yes. In a, in a car like that, uh, as the car is changing attitude for the aero, then it will be the same feeling in the steering from 0 to uh, 380. And this is unique. Wow. <laughs> it's always this amount of power, of course, when you're everyday driving a Bugatti, it's a little bit different. But when you get back into a car like this, you, you start to realize you know, how much. And I spent a lot of time recently driving in a new Audi RS3, which has yes. 400 horsepower. We have four, four, <laughs> four Audi RS3s. Four yes. yes. And, and just uh, to feed in a little yeah. bit of power. You're very, very, wow. very conscious. And I suppose one other interesting thing is with the dual clutch gearbox, it's very comfortable to just leave it yes, as I it mean, is. There's so much torque and more earlier torque now for a longer period as well. Yes. I always say, you know, sometimes here we have an indicator for the gear's position. And this indicator is exactly four millimeter. So basically not so many people can see this gears indicator. Yes. Why is that so small? Because basically it's not important. If you are in fourth gear, in fifth gear, 
uh, third gear, if you put power, it's like a lot of torque, 1,600 Newton per meter torque, mm -hmm. and it basically doesn't need to be in first gear, making a lot of noise for no movement. In Bugatti, we're making movement, no noise. After the bus, when it's uh, there, you can put full in first, full power in first. Yeah. Don't change the gear until I tell you go for okay. it. So full power, full, 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 it's quite incredible how usable the power is, how you would think launching with that amount of horsepower and that aggressively that it would spin up everywhere, but it, it just moves. It just, there's no weight for the traction. And the noises start to come to life a bit as well. It feels quite lively and it makes some very interesting sounds as well. Yes, it's a sounds, different character. Yeah, it's, a, it's a different character than the Chiron. I mean, uh, the exhaust has been modified. I mean, uh, in the shape. Yeah. But the funny thing is, that's only about 500 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> the car has so much available. It's unlimited. I mean, it's yeah. like uh, let's accelerate a little yes. bit here. It's, it's astonishingly fast, but you also get so many noises from it, like when you lift off. What is also unique is that it's not only torque. What is surprising is like it's torque, a lot of torque at the beginning, but then when you get speed, you continue to get torque. Yes. And that is surprising because normally cars today they get torque not as much as that, but then after a certain speed is decreasing. Yes. Yeah, if we try later, maybe we can be in fourth gear. If you are at the right rev in fourth gear and you're putting power, it's the same acceleration feeling than first gear, but you're moving already from 200 kilometer. Well, I so it's just like uh, crazy. I believe for the Super Sport, from just over 2,000 RPMs up to 7,000 RPM, yes, you correct. have full torque. Full torque. Which is the majority of the rev range, the yes. rev limiter being just 7,100. Yes. So the torque will be constant from two to seven. What is making super exciting is when you mixed the torque line which is very flat in Bugatti is constant, it's not a peak, it's a flat curve with the power torque from the engine, from the power from the engine. Mm -hmm. If you get this line which is around 3,800 rev, yeah. then it's like an explosion. Okay. And then you get the four turbocharged open, which are not always the case. Maybe we will do, as it's not very cold, we will do an exercise. Uh, if you like me, we will go for like uh, opening the window. Yeah. We will be uh, making a standing start. Okay. In first gear, open window, and then full power. We can open the window. If I open my window as well. Yes, full, full, full. Okay. Then you go where the two trees are. The yeah. two trees. Then you will stop in the middle of the two trees. Yeah, perfect. No cars are following, so it's very safe. Here you are in a straight line. When you are ready, you put full power. Now you can do that. Full, 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 it's very different with the window down to the window up, yes. how much of the turbo wastegate yes. kind of... That is quite exciting and then you get this device, if you want to open it again, of course the window will follow your orders. When you do this... Yeah. So wow. you have to fit up, what you try to do is like, try to ask the engine to receive a lot of air, don't be so in first gear, you go like third gear for example. So try to go third gear or, four, four, yeah. third gear or fourth gear, fourth, right. full power off. <laughs> You're asking a lot of air to go in the engine yeah. and then on purpose you say, no, I don't want. So basically without driving super fast, you can make your own music partition. There's a lot of character from it. Alternatively, you just pop it back into G. drive. 
and then and everything is calm everything is easy everything is back under control goodness so you know super sport obviously versus first sport they're completely different cars and it's the very interesting thing is how the Chiron family I suppose has expanded to offer a car that's more focused on top speed a car that's more focused on dynamic driving how I guess for you how much is there in that like in terms of the different experiences I think what we, we're trying to do is that, of course, uh, we have a lot of feedback as drivers because we're driving with customers, so we know what kind of customer asking what to the car, and then we can steer a little bit uh, that, but we have a very strong uh, engineering team, and, and I can promise you, I mean, uh, if you have like 200 engineers and you, you're giving them like access to a lot of resource financially and technically, they will create things that even the best driver in the world uh, will not believe it's possible. Yes. There's like no limit in uh, what's possible if you accept to be, uh, if you accept to be like, uh, I mean, investing the money to get the result. I mean, uh, and a car like that today compared to a Veyron, which was my dream car 10 years ago, yes. you have 60 computers. There was yeah. 20 in a Veyron. Yeah. So of course it's not the same car. Does that disturbingly easily, but that's the thing. There's nothing else like this. It's a completely unique driving experience to have this much power available, but also this much luxury and comfort. Yes, because it's usable. It's not only to get power. It's usable power. It's luxury. It's a feeling of a car that you get in your hands. Difficult to describe, but it's like a block when you're driving here. There is not like the front and the rear, there is not the right and the left like many cars where you feel it's not connected. Here is like a, a block which is like following what you're doing and basically the car disappears. You're driving on the road, the car is not there anymore. You're moving on the road, you're going there, there, left, yeah. right. Simple. Yeah, it, it feels wonderful. It feels <laughs> so incredible to drive. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, and I suppose uh, a few differences between this and you know the, the other models. Let's say you notice the aero pieces that you have over the top of the wheel arches, um, and a slightly different view out of the rear as well. But fundamentally, it's amazing that this is you know effectively a development on from the Chiron. Yes, it's, it's usually what's happening with the super sport of a brand is always. You try to put what you learn, I mean, in the beginning of the process and try to put the best uh, what you learn in the, in the last uh, last car you will uh, you will make. So, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the Super Sport is a bit of the result of what we learn on the on the either performance of the engine, but also like uh, dynamic of the car, aero from the car, and uh, it makes a car which is uh, outstanding with a lot of subliminal message. I like this subliminal mm -hmm. message that you know because you have been driving uh, Veyron's for uh, and Chiron's uh, for many times. Yeah. Uh, but you get all these things where you don't get like navigation system. Of course, we have a navigation system somewhere. We have a rear view camera somewhere. Yes. We have 12 volt charger somewhere. We have USB charger somewhere, but it's not what makes the value. The value is what you see here in the middle. In 10 years time, this will, this will be working, and in 20 years, this is, will, will be the value of the car. Mm -hmm. And when you get these things, I'm sure, Ashmi, you know why do we have one, two, three, four Komodos, you know? Why we have one, two, three, four. I'm sure it connects to having four headlights, four turbochargers, four four exhausts, four everything. <laughs> eight liter engine, 16 cylinder, very mathematical, 440 kilometer per hour, and yeah. with VAT you will be close to 4 million euro. Yes, <laughs> connected numbers. It's hard I think to explain sometimes the performance even of a car like this because, because it does it in this very gentle way considering it doesn't it doesn't, I'm trying to work out how to put this into words, it doesn't give you the same extreme sensation no. because you're not listening to rattling sounds and all sorts of, yeah, because, you know. Because it's in control, what we're trying yes. to do in a car like that, 
it's not the casino it's organized so everything it's in this car it's organized in the design mm -hmm. but that means the technology is organized also so it's in a way that everything will be affordable uh, at a level where normally it's not affordable and it's difficult to describe that to someone why because it does not exist you can drive the customer we get they get everything in the world which is possible. We have customers with 300, 400 cars. So everything which is on the road is in their hands. Until you have been in a Bugatti driving or passenger, you cannot understand what it is. It does not exist. And the second step is not like 5% lower. It's like 30, 40, 50% uh, yes. down. So I mean, of course, when we're talking about 1,600 Newton per meter or 1,600 horsepower, it's like 50% more than any hypercar in the world. So speed is never uh, an issue with a Bugatti. It's just depending on each one to know where you want to put the mark. Yes, I understand that. Just like that. what you want to do with the car, the car will be capable to do it much more than uh, what you need and much more than uh, you think it's possible yeah. in a safe way because we're doing that, we're driving uh, with some performance and uh, 1,000, uh, I don't know, but quite significant, 1,500, uh, nearly, nearly 1,600 horsepower. Huh? And then when you're getting that, you think it's like uh, normal driving. Yeah. You know, we were talking, it was like uh, control and uh, organized, safe. There are not many cars where you can accelerate like this and technically still have a normal conversation at the same time. Because you will be yes. focused on driving, which is also exciting when we're saying that's not because you buy Bugatti that you not find excitement in all the cars. Mm -hmm. But never try to compare. That was you a can't. sentence from Ettore Bugatti before, mm -hmm. and it's still today the Bugatti is not comparable to anything else because it's a different scale. That's lovely and very, very true. It's very true. You can't compare a Bugatti. I suppose I shall need a little bit of time to process and take in the entirety of that experience, a drive in the Chiron Supersport. But with it parked back up here at the Chateau Saint-Jean, I would like to show you a few more things about this wonderful car. And you'll notice that the wing is currently in the raised position. It actually stays up while the engine is cooling and will eventually lower itself back down automatically. But it gives us a sense of the enlarged surface of this and also the shapes that you can see over the top of it. A thing I didn't mention is the tyres that are specifically developed for the Chiron Supersport, the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s with their distinct unique graphic that you can spot around are actually heavily developed. They are tested to 500 kilometers per hour, but not only that, every tire is actually x-rayed before they can go on a car to ensure that there are no defects given the very, very high speeds that this car is capable of achieving. When we come round the unique design elements of the Chiron, for example, the sea that wraps around over the passenger cabin, this area here, this aero area, is very much one that stands out as well to release air from the wheel arches, again creating more downforce, releasing pressure and helping with the flow. You have aerodynamic elements like the air that flows in through here for example, inside of the headlights with those quad illuminated eyes on each side and of course the large Bugatti horseshoe grille, the iconic grille worn at the very front of this car and in fact if I step back, look at the aggressiveness of that design a couple of years obviously into the life of the Chiron which itself in total will consist of 500 units of all of the different iterations that I mentioned earlier but very much now getting towards the end of those the final few available allocations of course many of which will be these there are 30 of the Supersport 300 plus these will make up many of the last cars these and the Chiron Pur Sports which are limited to 60 units but today that has been an unforgettable drive an amazing outing with Pierre Henri what a driver what a person to be able to talk us through the car a little bit and I suppose we should come around and have a quick extra glance at the interior also by the way the carbon fiber covers that you have over the top of the engine back there Chiron Supersport and then inside, we've got the headlights on at the moment. 
for that view from the exterior you can see your driving modes that you go through here all controlled through the displays that the driver has in front those lovely central toggles everything's just really very very nicely finished your speed key down here which unleashes the maximum full speed this just actually pops out always a lovely feature an element magnetized into place down there even your seat controls just everything in here is finished beautifully sound system speakers right up behind you creating an awesome quality inside as well the materials still magnificent everything about the car there's nothing you can compare it to as Pierre Henri said and I think that is very much the case very very true when it comes to this and then this detail as I mentioned when driving these 30 millimeter deep circles reminiscent of Bugattis of old for example the EB110 but very much to do with the airflow to do with management and keeping the car planted down on the ground but yes what a drive what a car what an opportunity and what an awesome day here in Molsheim in France the home of Bugatti and an outing in the Chiron super sport that is it for now though thank you very much for watching guys thank you very much to the team here at bugatti and to pierre Henri for the drive as well but that's it for now i'll see you again very soon cheers